never be anyone's slave. Is that mine? He never, ever texts you back. My entire life has been one ridiculous mistake after another. When you get hungry enough, you're going to figure it out. Physically hungry or like hungry for the job? I am really going to miss your energy. I have been dating someone who treats my heart like it's monkey meat. It's a bummer, but people do outgrow each other. Will you still have sex with me? When it's appropriate, sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> 43 past the hour. That was a so portion of the trailer for HBO's Girls, an upcoming comedy about young women in their 20s. And here with us now, New York Times columnist Frank Bruni, who interviewed the show's star, Lena Dunham, for his recent column. And in, he wrote this, in part, Girls amplifies a growing chorus of laments over what's happening on the sexual frontier, a state of befuddlement reflected in part of post-feminist power dynamics and in part of our digital culture and virtual fixations. Are young women who think that they should be more like men willing themselves into a casual attitude towards sex that's an awkward emotional fit? Dunham's more convincingly rendered characters seem perplexed, and their frustration with men raises questions about whether less privacy means more intimacy and whether sexual candor is any guarantor of sexual satisfaction. People can be so available in a superficial sense that they're inaccessible in a deeper one. Frank. There is so much there. That was an yeah. incredible piece. It was an incredible okay, piece. You. It was an important piece. And I, it, it looks like this, this HBO series is going to be an important series to explain to a lot of people what's happening uh, with, the, the, with the kids. Um, but you asked, you asked an important question. Did Gloria Steinem actually go to the barricades and fight for women's rights for this? Well, you know, I mean, we're seeing a lot of progress when it comes to salaries. I mean, there's been stuff written recently about women on their, coming on their way to being the primary breadwinners in families. But when you watch girls and when you talk to young women about what's happening in the bedroom today, you find out that uh, things are as muddled and unsatisfying there as they've ever been. Um, and that is, that is something that hasn't, I think, changed as much as, it, as, as people had hoped in a positive way. They're scary and confusing. I talk to young girls uh, about their careers and their jobs and they ask me questions and I say well don't forget you know to get married and to have a, a life with someone and they look first absolutely stunned that I say that and then relieved that it's okay to feel that and it's sort of interesting as it plays into this because I think it's kind of a rough world out there for girls right now well and and also Frank of course you talk about the changing roles that Dunham actually asks at one point are we really supposed to celebrate the idea that we can be like men and have no emotional attachment to sex? I mean, is that something to celebrate? No, exactly. I mean, what she said to me when we talked is that in a lot of ways, women today get the cue that you're supposed to be able to have sex like men, which this isn't much of a compliment to those of us who are men, but what's meant by that is not really feel that much, just enjoy it physically and move on. Um, and she said at one point, she kind of said to herself, how is that the new goal? What's good about that? Um, because she thinks it's not something women do naturally. I'm curious, right. Frank, what's at the core of this? You said women are not finding satisfaction in the bedroom. You cited in your piece that hilarious GQ piece, which we can't really quote here, but the young woman... <laughs> nor, nor could I quote it. No, you couldn't quote it. But it's, go online because it's really funny, but her point is there's a whole generation now of young men who've been raised on online porn and have perhaps unrealistic expectations about what's going to happen. Does that play into it or is there more at play here? I hear this all the time and before I watched the early episodes of Girls, I actually heard it from young people I knew. And it's funny, the other day after the column appeared, I was looking through something and I saw a recent article with Raquel Welch, or excerpts from an article, and she was complaining about the effect of online porn and how people have these ridiculous ideas and images about sex that come from what they see online, which is more available, cheaper than porn ever was before. Well, and, and you bring up Raquel Welch, that takes us back to a time where a lot of us were growing up and you could have a low-cut dress that would excite a young male. Now you, you, you bring us into your piece with this opening scene where a woman is asked, a young woman is being asked to do things that many would consider to be dehumanizing and, and are literally being treated like some online fantasy. That's the real danger here, that enough is never enough. Yeah, no, I mean, the, th the threshold for excitement gets higher and higher, and 
You, you're, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. You, oh, yeah. yeah the thre I think the threshold for excitement gets higher and higher, and I think that people have such fixed fantasies in their heads that the person in front of them is just a prop or a vehicle toward that fantasy and not, you know, an individual mm -hmm. in and of herself. What it's about is completely forgotten. Uh, Caddy K, jump in. Uh, Frank, I was wondering in your conversations with Dunham whether she thought this was kind of part of a pendulum. I mean, you quoted there the progress that women have made in terms of what is it, one in four now being uh, higher earners than their husbands, women are better educated than men in America, and whether we're in a kind of transition phase where actually we're going to move to a position where women can say we want sex to be the way we want it as women. And in the same way that women are starting to change the workplace, making it more family friendly, um, getting the kinds of concessions that we need in order to stay in the workplace, are we going to start doing that at home and in the bedrooms as well? And, you know, it's muddled at the moment, but it's, does Dunham think that we're actually going to to get to a place where women are getting what they want. She's, she's unsure about that, but I think one of the things we were just talking about when we talk about online porn um, and that sort of thing, it, it, are, it, it pushes back against that other progress. I also think that uh, it, it's two very different realms to talk about what happens in the boardroom and what happens in the bedroom. Um, I think it's a lot harder to negotiate progress in the bedroom than in the boardroom. One of the tougher question mm. is, what do women want? Uh, again, if if the idea of sexual liberation is that women will behave in the bedroom like men behave in the bedroom, as you say, that is, for a lot of young women, a, a, an uncomfortable fit. Because, listen, I, I, don't, I don't think it's an insult to men. I think it's, it's uh, for, for men, I hope this isn't shocking to anybody out there, but for men, sex is more of a physical act. For women, it is more of an emotional act. That's been the way it's been for thousands and thousands of years. Yes. And there are a lot of people who think that's biologically wired into, the, into right. us. So no matter what changes culturally or, or what changes happen in society, if that is biologically wired into us, that's not going to change. As, as a general rule. The there are, of yeah. course, exceptions to all rules. John Meacham and I are much more sensitive than most men. You're cuddlers. We are cuddlers, actually. Yes. Right, Meacham? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 won't, we won't bring you into this. Thank but, you. But, oh. thank you. Would, but there's a real... Fifth. You know what, though? I've got, I've got a young girl. Amika, I know you've got two young young teenage girls mm -hmm. this is really frightening for me because i i i've got to know that men that my girl are going to date that when she gets to college will probably have been exposed to hardcore online pornography for at least a decade in this new world we live in and that creates really frightening challenges for girls and their parents that want to protect them. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to figure out what to do about it. I mean, we live in a country that rightly values free speech. You know, we don't want censorship, and yet there is this thing called the Internet now which speeds people to a lot of images that, uh, that, that can have a very negative effect on them over time. Yeah, so, you know, it seems to me, though, that we should be able to censor material that's inappropriate, and, and we're not. It's just out there for everybody to see. Little kids get their hands on this all the time now, and it is destroying young minds, and it's, it's not giving them time to fully understand what they're seeing. It really, it's, it's, a, it's to well, me, I, I wish that we would be able to sort of rein in what's happening well, you know, on the internet. You certainly parents, Willie, can be very aggressive inside their homes. And you can get, you know, I read, and I didn't know this, I'm gonna have to try this myself. Brad Pitt has actually bought software that stops his children from being able to Google hmm. Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie, and of course that's sort of off the path. But you can put things on your children's computers that can prevent this you for can. the most part. But I guess but not in this, the neighbor's house. Though, in this right? world, you're just putting your finger in the dam right. when another leak exactly. springs. I'm trying to think, Frank, of the parallel between violence because when we first started talking about online violence and violence on TV, we thought we were going to raise a generation of killers. But the argument to me has always been if you're a good enough parent, you're going to stop your child from becoming a killer based on what they've seen on TV. But it seems to me it's a little trickier and stickier 
for a parent to step in and talk about sex, which is much more uncomfortable to talk I, well, about. Well, I think it's a lot trickier for a very simple reason. We never say to them that a certain amount of violence is okay. Right. So they can compartmentalize it when they yeah, see it. Yeah, that's interesting. With, with sex, we're not saying don't be excited by sex, don't ever do that. We're saying do it responsibly, do it in a restrained fashion. Mm. Well, me too, so No, I, I have two young girls, and that, that's going to be my position. Yeah, exactly. Don't ever do it. Don't be excited. No. Don't ever no, do no, it. I think, yeah. All there right. aren't enough Anglican nuns, but if there were, <laughs> there are going to be two more. <laughs> two more. Frank, <laughs> thank nine. you so much. Frank, Frank Rudin, thank you. This is a very piece. important piece. Thank you. Caddy K, thank you as well. Great to see you. Caddy, do, you, do you, have, you, have, you have a young girl? I have two girls and two boys. I have a 16-year-old oh. girl and a 6-year-old girl. So wow. what, advi what advice do you give them in this realm? I, that I, might, you want I to think share. you you know I do think you need to try to talk about it. You have to try and overcome the embarrassment. And for my 16-year-old what I worry about is them being put in a position where they are being abused. Yeah. And not getting any gratification and not getting any satisfaction. You hear these awful stories from high school and I think you have to give them a sense of self-worth. You don't yes. need to be in that position. You're better than that. You're stronger, you're more dignified than that. And you don't have to do everything everybody asks you. Yeah. Gaddy K, thank you very much. Still ahead, White House Senior Advisor Valerie Jarrett on how women's issues are impacting the presidential election. We're back in just a moment. <laughs>